Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem B6 from Putnam 1999. So the question is this, let S be a finite set of integers each greater than 1. Suppose that for each integer n there is some s in s such that gcd of s and n is 1 or gcd of s and n is s. Show that there are two elements s and t in s not necessarily distinct, such that GCD is a prime. Okay, so one thing to uh, keep in mind is that even if they hadn't stated not necessarily distinct, which I believe in the original version of the exam, they had they do not have that phrase. Um, even if they hadn't stated that, they would you could still assume that S and T are equal, because it never says S and T are not equal. So just keep that in mind. I did insert that in there just to be more clear but it is not necessary to have that phrase okay so how do we solve this problem before i can get to the solution obviously i need to find one and how do we find the solution and uh, that's like one of the things that i do that i always um, talk about how how to obtain the a solution so the very first thing that i would do is i would try some small cases so what happens if I have a set with one element? What happens if I have a set with two elements? What happens if I have a set with three elements? And then from you know, using that process, I will be able to find the solution. Let's say I have S that has only one element. Okay, so clearly that element should be prime. Otherwise, the problem would be false. But how do we prove that the element must be uh, must be prime um, I will have to use the assumption the assumption is or so it says either the GCD is 1 or GCD is s GCD of s and n equals s that's the same thing as saying s divides n so that's what it means so either n and s are completely relatively prime or s divides n if I take a factor of a so I'm going to take a P that divides A. Then I know that GCD of P and A isn't 1. Because GCD of P and A isn't 1, and because of the assumption, A must divide P, which means A is equal to P. And as soon as you get A equals P, so that gives us the GCD of A and A is a prime. So we're done. So if S has one element, then that's the way we can prove it. Now, let's look at what happens if S has two elements. Okay, so that obviously is going to be a bit more complicated. So the way I thought about that it was to kind of implement the same idea. So take a prime and then go from there. So if I take a prime dividing A, then I know that GCD of, uh, if A is prime itself, then, then I'm done, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult here because it looks like I'm taking cases and I want to avoid casework because as you get to n, uh, n numbers in the set then there's going to be a lot of different cases which cases do we need to take but regardless if a is prime for now let's do this one and then we'll, we can see how we can actually turn that into a solution if p divides a then gcd of p and a is neither 1 nor a because a doesn't divide p i'm assuming that a is not prime which means uh, uh, which means B must divide uh, must divide P and B divides P means B, B is equal to P because either uh, P, B divides P O and then or um, GCD of B and P is 1 so which means P doesn't divide B if we are, we are in the first case then we are done so that means I'm, I'm basically stuck in the second case. So the second case would be that this tells you that GCD of A and B is 1. If they don't have any common prime factor, then the GCD must be 1. Okay, so how are we going to get a contradiction from that? We have A and B. I'm going to take a prime dividing A, a prime dividing B, and then I'm going to look at PQ. GCD of PQ and A isn't 1. GCD of PQ and B also is not 1. So neither of these two are 1, which means 
one of them must divide it. So let's say A divides PQ. But if A divides PQ, that means A must divide P because Q is a factor of B. Okay, so this makes things more and more complicated. As you get three numbers, you are going to get something more and more complicated. But what is the key to solving the problem? The key to solving the problem is use the assumption, which is GCD is 1 or GCD, or GCD is S. Another way of saying that would be if GCD isn't 1, then S divides N. And that's what I'm using here. Since GCD isn't 1, A must divide PQ. So that's what I'm using. So what if I have, I have three elements in S? So let's say S has three elements. Can I create a number that um, is not relatively prime to any of these? So take a factor of A, a factor of B, and a factor of C. Prime factors. And look at PQR. PQR is not relatively prime to A or B or C, which means A must divide it or B divides it or C divides it. Now you go from there. So since A divides PQR and this, GC, this guy GCD is uh, more than one, GCD of this with every one of these is more than one, therefore one of the numbers must divide it. But if you look at something like QR, you know that A doesn't divide this. So QR, either B divides it or GCD of B and QR is 1. Well, GCD of B and QR isn't 1. So that means B must divide QR. Or C divides QR, but that would be the similar strategy. And then when you take B divides QR, then you'll be able to solve the problem because either B is Q because Q also divides B or B is QR and if it is QR then you can show that uh, GCD of B and C must be R. So that's not difficult after that. But how do we articulate that in general? How do we go from this solution for two numbers, for one number, for two numbers, for and three numbers to a general solution? And that's the difficult part. So in order to do that, we have to understand our solution a little bit better. Is there any way I can avoid all of this casework? I, I took a bunch of cases here. Is there any way I can avoid all of the casework here? And the answer is yes. So if you think more about this one, I'm looking for, so we are looking for a number S that is not relatively prime to any element of S. So if you look at PQR, the reason I chose that was I wanted something that is not relatively prime to any element of S. Okay, so but if you take that number in, the, in, a, in a way that the number is an extreme number in that sense. So for example, the extreme means either smallest or largest. In this case, obviously the largest is impossible to take. The largest, and, and you could go to infinity and you could have larger and larger numbers that are relatively prime to, um, that are not relatively prime to any element of S. If you take the smallest one, then you'll be able to use the assumption that is the smallest and solve the problem. So let's now put that to an actual solution. Okay, um, so let S be the set A1 through AN. Note that there is something that is not relatively prime to any of these numbers. Note that A1, AN is not relatively prime to any element of S. 
So it's not relatively prime to any element of S. Therefore, I can choose something. So there is some number that is not relatively prime to any number in S. So I can choose the smallest number that is not relatively prime to any number in S. So let M be the smallest uh, positive integer with GCD of M and AJ more than one for all J one through M. So for, for, for every one of these uh, J's we have that GCD is more than one. Okay now I'm going to use the minimality of this M. I'm going to take some prime factor of M so let P be a prime factor of M. Okay, now there are two things that I can say. First, I can say that since GCD of M and AJ is more than one, by assumption, GCD of M and a something must be a k for some k between one and n. So we know that. That was the assumption. Now, since m over p is less than m, we know that GCD of m over p and a sub l is 1 for some l. So again, m was the smallest. I'm using the minimality here. m was the smallest positive integer when the GCD is more than 1. That means if I make m smaller, if I look at m over p, I would have some element in the set that is relatively prime to that um, uh, that AL, uh, that M over P. Now, I'm claiming that AK and AL have P in common. P is the only element in common in there. And that is not very difficult to see. So note that GCD of M and AL is more than 1. Now, since m is m over p times p and gcd of m over p and a l is 1 gcd of m and a l would be p because m over p if i were to write it down maybe i guess one more step this would be m over p times p comma a l. Now these two are relatively prime. They don't share a common factor. But we know that the entire thing must be more than one. So this would have to be p. Now note that a k divides m. If you look at a k, a k divides m. That was the assumption. Okay, so that means if I make sure, if I make sure that this P that I chose divides a K, then I would be done. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to take an extra step here. So now I realize that, oh, I need this P to divide a K which is how we come up with solutions. We kind of work something out and we see, oh, there's something missing here and then we add it to the solution. So, um, so suppose P is a prime dividing a K and thus M because a K divides M. Okay, so 
this means P, uh, this means GCD of AK and AL is going to be P. Because GCD of M and AL is P and P also divides AK. Let's add that here. And that is the end of the solution. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel where you can find more videos like this. I will put some similar videos to this video on the screen and I will see you in one of the other videos.